Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Dave. And I'm Gretchen. Uh, and today we're going to be continuing painting the Night Haunt uh, models from Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. We started painting these mm -hmm. on Tuesday as myself and Mia. So you're going to pick up where Mia left off. I am. I believe in me. And you believe in you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I believe you can do it too. Uh, for sure. Uh, so on the, um, on the spinner at the front, uh, there we go. So here are a couple of uh, guys that I finished off earlier. Uh, these are actually will actually appear in the November issue of Game Trade Magazine. Ooh. This gives you a rundown of sort of how to do the uh, the spooky cloth. There. Spooky. Um, spooky. Uh, what will I'll get you to do? Where shall I, might, I shall just I'm gonna steal that and pop this one up. So yeah. this is one of the ones that, that Gretchen's going to be working on, and I'm going to have this guy to work on as well. Um, but basically, yeah, we're going to go through a uh, little bit, of, bit more work on their cowls, darken those up a bit, uh, and then pick out all those lovely details. The, um, the hands, the, um, the boards, the axes, the, the swords. swords, the keys. <laughs> all sorts of, lots of uh, fun little details today. So, boop, there we go. I like them. Yeah, I'm they, for they these. are definitely cool. Just the season for spooky. For spooky, spooky yeah. season. It is, totally. Uh, so now I'm going to get the Underworld Night Vault box out of the way. So that's a, um, that box is available now from your local retailer. Um, head on in. Uh, it's, I was telling everybody on Tuesday that it's basically like the second season okay. of the Warhammer Underworlds uh, games oh. that uh, Games Workshop has created. Shadespire was the first one. Uh, which released uh, September, October, September, October last year. Uh, this one released just end of September, and uh, it's going to add new um, new war bands to the game. Uh, so this is one of them, the the uh, Court of the Briar Queen, Briar Queen, I think, uh, and or the Thorns of the Briar Queen. Good one aesthetic. of the two. I can't remember. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll read it. I'll read it out if I can find it. No. Hey Mia. Hey Lee. Hey Keith. There we go. Th Thorns of the Briar Queen is the name of that. Uh, <laughs> oh, and Gretchen also has the chat. I have the chat, yeah. Excellent. Uh, Say hi. Hi, everybody. Doing my job. <laughs> Gee. Good job. Good job. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be painting those. Um, as I said, yeah, jumping into adding a little bit more of the uh, night, night haunt gloom. Um, I love this shade of blue. It is great, isn't it? Just it is. Really I cool. would paint my house this shade of blue. Yeah? Yeah. Just enough gray in it? Just enough gray in it. It's a good... But not too much. It's yeah. a good shade. I like it. So we were talking earlier about does this count as Inktober? I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I don't know if any of y'all are doing Inktober. I have been trying, but I haven't yet for today. And Dave and I were discussing, is this, is this Inktober appropriate? We say yes. I think it totally is. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, we're using ink. using Wash. washes, yeah. inks, that kind of that kind of thing, doing something creative. Hey, Natasha, we do match. We can wear green, <laughs> and apparently that's the theme for today. Yep, green is the theme. <laughs> I'm wearing a shirt from my uh, favorite horror movie franchise. Ooh. From Aliens. Very the Aliens nice. franchise. Some people would say it's a sci-fi thing. I'd say it's a little I bit more horror. It's a sci-fi horror. It it's is. It's definitely both mixed into one, I would yep. say, in my professional opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, yep. Your professional, uh, what's the, movie critique? Yeah. Uh, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yep. yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I just became a professional right now. Just, you did. Yep. You did. <laughs> we'll pay you after the show. There we go. Sweet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So. No, I love I love spooky things. I had my uh, a best friend of mine came to visit last night, and we watched Hocus Pocus. Oh, cool! Yeah, Excellent. so that was really fun. They had zombies in that too. Right. Yeah. Yep, that is a that's good one. It's, I, I must admit, it's been a little while since I've seen it, but um, I think I saw that Nat Natasha watched that as well last yeah, night. Yeah, I think it was just. Yeah. It might be a bit of a. Uh, is it a bit of a? Uh, Lisa Garland says hi, Dave. Hey, Lisa. Uh, Katie Creech and I say hi. Can we get a shout out, please? Yes, hey, Katie. Hey, Lisa. How you doing? That's funny. They're going to be sitting around Adams. chuckling at me for the next hour. Says afternoon, gang. Cool. Who doesn't want to sit around and chuckle with us for the next oh, hour? 
I didn't say with. They're going to be chuckling at me, I'm sure. I know Katie. That's funny. But uh, yeah, so is, is that a, like a tradition for you, Hocus Pocus? Um, I don't know if it's like a tradition, but it's definitely like a classic, like spooky. I consider it spooky, not scary. Sure. So yep. like it's, it's a something that you can watch with, like it's family friendly scare. Sure. Nothing, nothing that's going to give kids nightmares, hopefully. <laughs> and it's a fun watch. So we watched that, and then we also watched, um, oh shoot, what is it? Uh, the roommate one with the vampires. There's what we do in the shadows. Oh, okay. That. Right. I have not seen that one. <laughs> That's why my reaction was like, ah, I don't recognize it. <laughs> it's more like it's from New Zealand and oh, okay. the same director for Thor Ragnarok. Okay, right here. Did that. Uh, Taiki, um, with, I can't pronounce his last name, Ogali. Okay. I don't okay. want to secretly think <laughs> him in case, you know, he's watching, obviously. I'm sure, yeah. Obviously well, every, wa everybody's watching right everyone's now. Everyone's watching. Can tell. So. <laughs> uh, Natasha says we watched it last night. And Dave, are you finishing What You Did Tuesday? Yes, we are. We're uh, basically on Tuesday, we uh, spent a lot of time putting washes onto the models. So there's the, uh, the green and the, the pale blue, sort of blue-gray wash, the night haunt gloom. Um, let's get, oh, there we go. Sorry. That's okay. We've got time. <laughs> Nobody's waiting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. So we put down the, the green and the, uh, the blue. Uh, so washes take a little bit of time to dry. So we knew it was going to take um, more than one episode to get them finished. But, uh, but now we can come back in, do some extra detailing. Uh, like at the moment, I'm painting the skull on the, fa the face here. So yeah, I think uh, we might do a little bit, try and do a little bit more of that as well for more involved models do like a, a twofer or two shows on the the same models I like it it feels like we're all working together yeah yep so Lisa says how's cool. Lucy and Emily they're doing well they're at school at the moment my daughters ah. Katie was uh, is the uh, my youngest daughter Lucy's daycare provider for, oh. From when she was about six months old till, uh, till she went to preschool. That's adorable. And then every, uh, every summer, the girls go over there, spend uh, a lot of the summer there. Ah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely cool. <laughs> Toss the paintbrush. I'm, just, I'm doing a uh, color guard. It's fine. I can get a really nice paintbrush. What do you do? Throw it around. <laughs> All good. Uh, sometimes you just get the urge to oh, sure. twirl. I get it. <laughs> I understand. Okay. So I think while I'm uh, letting the night haunt gloom, the second coat of that dry on the uh, the cowl of the um, of the Varklav, the cruel here, mm -hmm. I'll uh, just get stuck in and um, actually put down like a black base coat on all of those other uh, fun elements, like all of the. The chain mail, the chains here, the keys, the sword. I'm gonna try to get a basin on all this rope. Oh yeah. On the, the ever hanged is the name of that character. Oh, yep, yeah, the ever hanged. Which is pretty cool. How's the chat looking? Oh hey, there's Rick. Hey Rick. <laughs> <laughs> hey boss. <laughs> So. Yeah, I like these. These are these are fun little guys. They remind me a lot of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely the uh, the feel of the ring wraiths. Yeah, ring wraiths and um, the, the army. army. Yeah, the undead. All right. Undead yep. army from yeah, yeah. The army of the dead. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, by the way, your live red sign is on both of your faces when in the small window. Oh. 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 Okay. Who's saying that? <laughs> uh, Yannick. And then Katie says, I hear you talking about me, Mr. Painter. Yep. 
you wanted a shout out. And how's the book going? Oh, how's the book going? Good question. <laughs> uh, so this is the book that I uh, kickstarted earlier this year, Ooh. March and April, and have been working on sort of getting it together. Uh, sent it off, sent the files off to the printers yesterday. That's fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Kind of got an email back from them overnight saying, uh, here are the places where you're wrong. So this morning has been spent uh, fixing those and I'll be sending the, the uh, sort of corrected files tonight. So that was good. Uh, I got to spend a little bit of time this morning talking uh, with a rep from a logistics company. Ooh. Yeah. And if you ever thought you wanted to know about how to get books from Lithuania to uh, Maryland? You know, I didn't, but now I'm curious. No, you're not, you're not curious enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would not recommend it for anybody. No, it's just a, there's a lot of things to, uh, a lot of questions to answer, really, is the, the fun part there. So Sounds fun. Sounds exciting. Going, going well is the answer, is the short answer. Good notes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> going well. So, but uh, yeah, it's definitely been a lot of work and I'm really excited about seeing it sort of finally in print. Uh, but yes. That's always so that's exciting. Been been Fun there. things on the horizon. Yep. But uh, actually, I just realized when I said that I was going to be painting all of the uh, metallic areas black, mm -hmm. I didn't explain why. Mm -hmm. so you should do that. Yeah, I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> now? Will I do it now? Maybe. Okay, do you guys want to hear why to paint things black before you paint them metallic? Yep. So uh, basically, I, I do that because it gives the um, you sort of get a nice smooth coat under it uh, and with uh, sort of the way that things like the keys here sit against each other or we've got those links of chain mail. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, uh, well when you paint silver over the black or something like the chain mail, mm -hmm. the, uh, the little rings, the holes inside um, oh, already so have the black easier. in them. Yeah, it just auto shades. Yeah, basically. That's what you're, uh, you're doing. Real life paint hacks with Dave. Woohoo! So it's, uh, it can also be good if you've uh, been painting and sort of splashed over onto other areas. Mm -hmm. So you can go through and do your, sort of do the black and the metallics last typically because you get to do a little bit of correction work with the black. And uh, yeah, it just sets you up those nice silvers and uh, bronzes that we're going to be using. All right. So Dylan says, do you prefer Vallejo model color over game color? Uh, I don't know if I pronounced that right. No, no you, yep. Oops. All good. Yes. Vallejo, yep. Uh, basically, uh, for me, I think model color and game color are essentially, they certainly feel like the same paints. I don't really uh, generally pay attention, but I use both, uh, really depending on the color itself. The uh, the game color paints uh, are all very similar to the older Citadel paint range that I did a lot of my painting with, uh, mm -hmm. for, sort of for a bunch of years. Uh, so when Games Workshop changed their range and changed the different colors they had and all the names and that kind of thing, it meant that the Vallejo game color range was a place I could go to and recognize all of the, all the right. colors. Shane says, what are you painting and what is that character? Oh, okay, so uh, we're painting models from, uh, they're Nighthaunt models from the uh, Thorns of the Briar Queen Warband from Warhammer Underworld's uh, Night Vault. This particular character that I'm painting with, oh, I'm getting right, yeah, that's a good spot, there we go. Painting there is um, Varklav the Cruel. So he has a, a really cool sort of um, mask. He's carrying a candlestick and uh, keys, lots of jangling chains and that kind of thing. 
Uh, not a proper ghost if you don't have that. No, you're going to have the rattling chains for if sure. If you don't have rattling change and a good boo, you're not a proper ghost. Yep. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's funny, actually. Um, me, so Mia and, I, Mia, and I, bleh, Mia and I were talking about uh, ghosts on um, Tuesday, and Mia's a big fan of the uh, sort of the found footage uh -huh. type, type ghost Those movies. are really fun. Yeah, I think those are fun. Yep. I'm... Uh, I enjoyed uh, like the Blair Witch, but uh, some of the other ones, like I guess the shows, mm -hmm. the, the, the para no, paranormal shows. I love shows. Ghost Adventures. <laughs> okay. Did Mia mention Ghost Adventures? I, she might have. I, oh. I can't remember. I but, uh, so have you ever watched it? I, I haven't. Maybe not specifically that one, <laughs> but I'm not a big fan of those shows. So. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Okay, <laughs> no, this is why Ghost Adventures beats Taps. Okay, so Ghost Adventures is set up like they just walked into a bar and the producers were like, who is the most puppy dog jock type person here who believes in ghosts? And they found, they found that man straight from the early 2000s and they went to him and they said, do you want to go on an adventure? And that big jock man said yes <laughs> more than anything in the world and the, he there he goes and there he does and that is ghost adventurers okay they just set him loose they say something spooky happened here and he goes oh boy and goes <laughs> forth <laughs> just like that exactly like that that's exactly amazing exactly like that and yep. it instigates things he's like i'm gonna go fight the ghost i'm gonna make it angry and you're like no right. don't do that <laughs> and he's like um, i am and it's kind of i feel like everyone just doesn't want to tell him it's not real okay <laughs> but it's okay because he's just so darn excited that's funny yeah that's, funny. that's why i like ghost adventures okay <laughs> Nice. Well, maybe I, I maybe I could give that a go. <laughs> Too bad funny. it's all fake because that was a funny origin story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I believe. I don't know that it's fake, Natasha. I'm that. That's the story I tell myself in my brain. Right. That's yeah. That's that's good. That's um, funny. I yeah. happen to. I really like spooky things. I like sci-fi things. I I think yeah. they're fun. Um, I like hearing other people's ghost stories. Right. Yeah. So I Actually, think you should talk with Mia then, because uh, she apparently lived in a haunted house for a while. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Does anyone else have ghost stories? Put them in the chat. Put your favorite ghost story in the chat. Yep. What's your spooky, spooky encounter? What's your X Files moment? <laughs> <laughs> Aliens. <laughs> Aliens. The truth oh. is out there. The truth is out there. We're painting it. Ghosts do exist in <laughs> tiny miniature plastic form. <laughs> Haunted minis. That's that's uh, if I had a if I had a movie. That's what that I would. would be? Yeah, well, let's pitch it to sci-fi. Haunted minis. Would it be a little bit like uh, like toy? Uh, is it toy soldiers? What was the name of that oh, movie? I don't know. Small soldiers. Oh, small soldiers. Yeah. Yep. I don't. You don't think so? I mean, we could, but we we could have fun with it. There's lots of different oh, yeah, minis. Definitely. We've painted so many. See, Matt, cursed paints that bring the the spirit of the minis to life. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Bam. Yep. Done. Excellent. Maybe they're made with uh, like uh, water from the fountain of life or something like that. <laughs> See, see, yeah. now you're getting with it. Okay. Now you're get, we got this, we, we got this. Yeah. Someone write that down. We're going to pitch it to sci-fi, okay? Yep. Happy Little Minis, the movie. And before anybody says, it'll never happen, Sharknado. Sharknado should never have happened, but it did five times, right? You know what times, I love right? more than Sharknado? <laughs> you want to know what I love more than Sharknado? Jersey Shore Shark Attack. Shore shark Look attack. it up. It came out around the same time, but Sharknado got all of the action, and it makes right. me so sad because Jersey Shore Shark Attack should have. It should have. <laughs> right. You sure it should have? <laughs> I'm gonna guess maybe it shouldn't have. But yep. Uh, That's crazy. James says I still feel my cat's fur on my leg from time to time. Right. Aw, that's kind of sad. Yeah. I feel my mm. animals fur on my legs all the time, but they're not dead. They're just furry. Right. <laughs> um, Natasha says, Toy Story with ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, there we go. 
I think uh, it's kind of crazy, but yeah, we, we were talking about that on Tuesday anyway, but I kind of realized yesterday that I think the main, like when you think about ghosts, mm -hmm. ghosts themselves are like the classic ghost, the let's glide Ooh. through a wall. Ooh. Yeah. It's like, hi, how you doing? <laughs> There's nothing sort of really super scary, and like not as scary as a uh, like a twelve foot tall alien with acid for blood kind of thing. Well, I mean, to give a good spook. Yeah. I would be an obnoxious ghost. If I, <laughs> <laughs> if I were. What a do ghost, you mean? I, what I would. You do? Like I would just haunt people like un in unexpected ways. Like I wouldn't necessarily want to be scary, but I would want to be like mischievous. Okay. Like yeah. yeah. So so no, it's so like a friendly poltergeist. Yes. Okay. Like maybe I'll help you with your homework, but also maybe I'll sit on the edge of your bed singing "Row, Row, Row Your Boat." And you never know which one it's going to be. Yeah. You okay. Don't know. Right. But I definitely do that pop up in the mirror thing. Like okay. shut the I'm behind you. Shut the, and then he's boom. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's think, just a classic. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it kind of got me thinking like, is, is it mostly, and people can mostly get scared of the ghosts, not just from the surprise factor, but it is like, oh my good, they, God, they do exist kind of thing in movies. I, yeah, that's it's a like, good question. <gasps> You've challenged my whole. It's like M and M's. Thought, sort of pro <laughs> challenged my whole thought process, or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so is it something like that, or or is it actually just the the potential to be so terrifying? Maybe something like the uh, all the Japanese ghost movies. Oh, those are like scary. Like the Grudge and those yeah, like are scary. Legitimately I don't like scary. Those. Oh, yep. <laughs> that, we've moved out of spooky. Right. Yeah. 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 Scary. Okay. Totally. Yeah. This is totally and scary. <laughs> Okay. Right. So Rick says, what is everybody else painting? And oh. make sure to join Happy Little Minis group and share all of the awesome things you're painting. Especially because I didn't get any hashtag Gretchen's, fr uh, Gretchen's Fridge last time. <laughs> How am I supposed to put that up there, guys? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, there was a, uh, there have been a bunch of great minis been, that have been put up recently. There really have, though. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I think it was uh, Chris Gorka mm -hmm. posted uh, either this morning or last night posted uh, some uh, Death Eaters Ooh. from uh, there's a game by Night Models that's coming out soon and uh, they did a big preview uh, like a Harry Potter board game yeah they did like a pre-order thing and uh, in the game there's Harry Ron and Hermione uh, there are uh, spiders and there are four Death Eaters, and it is fantastic paint job on the Death Eaters. Ooh. Lots of great Check um, that out. sort of different textures and uh, and highlight colors, but it basically their outfits are all black. So their robes are like a black with a gray highlight, and mm -hmm. the shirts and tunics sort of thing are uh, black with a, a bluish gray highlight. But there's enough It's difficult differentiation. to work in so many dark colors and yeah. still make it look ethereal and spooky and... Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like working with dark blacks and grays and multiple layers of those are always more complicated than sometimes working with normal colors. It's always really cool to see what people can do with that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely agreed. So everybody should go to the head of the group, Painting Happy Little Minis. Uh, join up if you're not a member. But check out the work from uh, from Chris. Pretty sure it was Chris. Tell me if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, beautiful stuff. There we go. So now I'm just going through for all the medals. I'm uh, painting them with uh, Tinny Tin, one of Rick's favorites. So a really dark, sort of bronze color, which won't show up very well on the on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. It'll show up on the spinner. This is true. I'll put them on the spinner in a second. But, uh, get a yep, just getting that first coat on the chain there. In here. Then mm -hmm. I'll probably let this dry and switch to my other guy over there. Excellent. That's one of the things I was talking about on Tuesday as well, is that 
when you're uh, using uh, washers, because they take a while to dry, it's good to have another couple of models to sort of switch back and forth sort of around. So. so wee details. Yeah. Oh. Cool. <laughs> um, there's, let's see. Hey, Dave, Don Murray, and Colin Goodwin say hello. And is that the ghost of Johnny Rose I hear in the background? <laughs> No. 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 <laughs> that's, the, that's the way better Leona. <laughs> Get with the times. Good morning. I love you guys. Good ideas for Halloween and art contribution. <laughs> Excellent. Who's that from? And is that, that is from Christopher Newman. Cool. We're, we're a fountain of good ideas. Okay, I'm going to take those off. I'm going to pop up Vaclav the Cruel. There we go. So, yeah, we can kind of see the that tinny tin, really dark Any bronze sort of color. I'm really curious to see. Are you gonna do a flame on the top of that candle, or like smoke I, effect? I'll, I'll do a flame. Yeah, yeah. I've got some uh, some yellow and some red here ready to go. But I don't know. yeah, oh, that's good. No, it looks great. Yeah, it definitely worked. I think it's just mainly those other areas that. He sort of first started coming around in art and shadow, so. James Legitimate says, shadow. gotta run, paint safe, everyone. <laughs> Have a good one, James. I like to paint on the edge. Paint on the edge? Yeah. I don't, you might fall off. <laughs> At least I don't lick my paintbrush. Yeah, this is true. I can't believe how many people think it's not a good thing. I've, well, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can totally believe how many people think it's not a good thing. <laughs> I've, I've drinking paint water by accident, yep. uh, and I gave myself an asthma attack with charcoals. Oh, okay. In art school, yeah. See, I, that, none of that has happened to me with the, the brush licking. The worst that's happened is I've sort of been slightly embarrassed when I walked out into public with a big sort of right, white sort of sm paint smear on my lip. I, I get messy with charcoals, pastels, charcoals, any of that. I am a messy person. Yep. Um, my old roommate from college, who actually works here. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Katie. She would, All right, excellent. She, yeah, shout out. Uh, <laughs> she would be able to tell you that I, I am a messy artist, messy artist right. person. It's Worst roommate ever. <laughs> uh, excellent. I That's also cool. move around a lot whenever I'm doing like sketches. She used to call it like art yoga. Okay. <laughs> That's great. There we go. I'm sure there's certain people out there. Chat, do any of you get like really intense faces, <laughs> mechanisms <laughs> with the painting? <laughs> I'm sure there are people who have um, faces that are similar to like bass player faces. Yeah. Like this though. What's your <laughs> quick everyone selfie? <laughs> send in send in your uh, hashtag painter face. Painter face. There we yeah. go. That sounds like a plan. With the current mini you're working <laughs> on and your your weird painter face that you do. No. Oh. Great idea. I want to see them. Let us know we're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> What's the candy jar? The candy jar is a jar filled with orange and yellow and red to make it look more orange, yep. dice, and that is it, because we're festive. Yep. <laughs> and Leona said I wasn't allowed to eat any more candy. <laughs> I blame her entirely. <sighs> but uh, apparently all these dice are, uh, they belong to Leona, so I'm gonna give them away. Oh. I think we no, just have, kidding. <laughs> I think we should have like a counting competition. Like yep. how many do you think's in there? And you win bragging rights. Yep. <laughs> Unless you can come up with anything more interesting. <laughs> I don't have the clout for that. I just have the clout for ba uh, bragging, yeah, bragging rights. Bragging rights. I can't speak. I can't speak. I'm too excited about counting dice. If people want to guess. Yeah. Leona, you hear that? If you guess how many dice are in that pumpkin, yep. Leona will make a prize. Uh, you'll get some candy corn. You'll get some candy corn. Yum. Excellent. I think um, what we should do is we should should make it for uh, like the whole of October. Yes. That
So for, one, yeah. for every episode from here until the end of October. I like that. Make your, uh, submit your guesses. Oh, okay. Ooh, yeah. So we're going to cool. take a picture of it, and we'll post it in the group. And you can try to guess how many's in there. And we'll come up with something. <laughs> Even if it's candy corn. Holiday spirit. <laughs> <laughs> can you win this bag full of holiday spirit? <laughs> That's what they're calling it these days? <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. Make some candy dice for it. <gasps> That's a really good idea. I love cooking. I want to make it. candy dice now. You should do it. I'm going to totally do, do candy dice. Let's do it. Yep. I'm not sure why, but my wife's been super excited about watching all of the, the Halloween cooking shows. I love all cooking shows so yeah. much. And I always, like, it makes me want to cook more every time I watch them. So I'll get in a habit of watching them, and then my boyfriend will come over, and the how, like, the kitchen is in shambles, and there's, <laughs> like, just baked goods as far as the eye can see. And I'll just be like, I made things. What did you make? Everything. Everything. I made all the things. I made all of them. I cooked until I ran out of flour. Pretty much. I bought bake, uh, flour specifically for baking bread, and I'm right. excited. I can't, I can't remember if I talked about this. I don't think I did. I didn't mention it on Tuesday. But over the weekend, I cooked, uh, I baked brown, uh, cupcakes. Ooh. It was my first time baking cupcakes with my daughter. And how'd that go? Um, amusingly. <laughs> because we had, uh, so I was using a cupcake mix. Yeah. So out of, straight out of, a, out of a box. Okay. And uh, I pulled out the first bag, mm -hmm. the bag that was on top. <laughs> And use that and mix it all to follow the directions. I can see where this is going because <laughs> I'm an avid baker. <laughs> and I put it in, follow the directions, stuck stuck into the oven, and then like uh, like 15 minutes later, there was no real rising, and it was all very soft and something in the middle. And I said to my wife, "What's going on?" And she goes, "Oh, just leave it it's in there a little bit longer." It's okay. And I said, "But it's not. They're not like that. They're just, it was very concave." And she goes, "Well, they won't rise too much more." And so they said, we could bake for another 10 minutes. And I was like, these haven't changed at all. And was, Fun was fact. Like, well, okay, well, I'm just waiting to put the frosting on them because I've mixed up the frosting from the other bag. And so you can immediately see where things have gone. I you mixed used, them up? I mixed the frosting mix and put that in the oven and had the cupcake mix separate. Oh. So. Oh. I was very uh, able to very quickly uh, go and rescue the <laughs> the cupcake mix, so I can breathe life back into it, and put that in the oven. Oh no! And then make a completely <laughs> different frosting mix from scratch. I I like cooking. I like cooking a lot. Baking is more of a science it is. than um, normal cooking. Yep. You have to you have to know how different things interact chemically. Yep. In order <laughs> to be able to salvage things like that or be able to bake on a whim. Yep. Um, I'm definitely not that person. <laughs> I lack the precision. Which is also amusing because my daughter said that she prefers to bake with, uh, with her mother. Aww. Because her mother is less precise than I am. I so she's, my, I think she's a little confused. I give my friends who go buy the recipes heart attacks because I'll be like, oh, I feel like adding more of this, and they're like, but it's not in the recipe. And I'm like, <laughs> it's fine. It's tasty. It's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. My heart says it's fine. Nice. It's good. Don't, don't worry. Uh, there we go. Goblin cupcakes. That would be a cool thing. Someone give me a theme for cupcakes. I'll make goblin cupcakes. That'd be awesome. You should totally Sounds do that. Sounds fun. You can make meringue mushrooms. You know yeah. That? And they look like real mushrooms, but they're like meringue cookies. Oh, cool. And you can put them on things. And yeah, that so sounds many. good. Now, the thing that um, got me thinking about is we ended up making a purple icing. Oh. Purple frosting. Steal some of your. Go for it. Uh, so all of I just painted all of the roses on the Briar Queen's um, sort of th thorn rope, painting all of those purple. So you're gonna yep. So definitely cool. So my cupcakes weren't as they weren't as elaborately decorated as like roses or anything like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was one of those things. Like yeah, I'm gonna leave it to the uh, to the semi professionals. <laughs> not me. Not me. I am not the baker. <laughs> oh. 
The painter, yeah. And the fryer and the boiler and the griller. You know, you always need... And the roaster. See... As long as there's no they're, they're, science they're like involved. like dad level. Dad <laughs> level. You can... That's all you need to know as a dad. Yep. That's all. You need to know all those things. It's funny, because my dad loved babies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some people are cool. <laughs> unlike me. <laughs> I think anybody who, uh, who's got the patience for baking is, uh, is pretty cool in my books. I just like kneading bread because you get all your anger out. <laughs> <laughs> the second nice. round of cupcakes looked great, though, says Mars Garrett. Right, yeah. They, they, they came out okay. <laughs> uh, as Drummond says, an epic skill range, Dave. Yeah, just, just lacking the baking. I'm telling you, you as. can learn that. You can, you can learn it. Yeah, excellent. I believe in you. You believe in me painting, and I oh, yeah. believe in you baking. I, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> baking's a lot tougher. <laughs> because painting, you can have paint recipes that you use. Mm -hmm. I, I generally have uh, essentially paint recipes so that I know if I'm trying to work out a new color scheme, it might be, I only want to change one or two colors the way that I do one or two colors. So sure. everything else is a standard way. So I kind of know what I'm going to end up with. So I think this brassy brass is looking pretty good. Very well on the keys. And the mask. How's yours coming along? Um, I'm, I have all the little details going down. And then I think once all of the black on the weaponry is dry, I'm going to go over with the uh, the metallics. Cool. And then I'll go over and uh, add some more detail to the rope. Yeah. Yeah, picking so out each of those coils. Yeah. Yep. Well, they're not coils. What are they? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. technically kind of coiled, yeah. knotted. Hangman's knot. Braids. 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 Yeah. Right? Something Thank like you, that. Ghost of Leona. <laughs> 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 yep. Something like that. We'll go with that. But, uh, Craig Starn says, my Citadel paints will be arriving later, and my first officially commissioned mini will get here Monday for me to begin working on. Oh, excellent. I think Craig That's was exciting. talking a couple of weeks ago about uh, wanting to start doing commission painting for people other than, uh, other than his friends. So that's very cool. It's a big step. I'm just happy to start getting the basics down and feel more comfortable. Yeah. We'll see how it goes with all of that sculpting. I'm going to hop Varklav the cool, uh, cruel. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty cool, too. And I'm here. Uh, Get him yes. some sunglasses, man. Yeah. <laughs> Snap back. So uh, put a little bit of brassy brass on, the, uh, on his candlestick and mask and keys there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they turned out pretty well. After I finish the brassy brass on uh, the Briar Queen, I'll uh, put her up there. So, ooh. It's gonna be fun, sort of disembodied hand coming into the camera shot. But, there we go. Uh, I think, this is, she's kind of a, Actually, all of the Nighthorn, Nighthorn models, um, both from Warhammer Underworld's uh, Night Vault, which is what we're painting today, uh, and from the Age of Sigma range, Warhammer Age of Sigma range, are all very cool. But they're very um, light and airy. Remember that, yes. that wonderful sort of dynamic floating feel. Um, but they're all, all the robes are hollow, and you can sometimes see through into the hollow robes. And, Basically, it's just the spirit carrying it forward rather than anything sort of physical. Which I looks like great. that in a lot of minis, though. I think it makes the, the sculpt that much more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That's definitely cool. I really love when sculpts have a, a lot more uh, dynamic motion to them. Yep. Than just kind of standing there. I think it's so much fun, it's so interesting. 
And if you mess up painting, then you still have something good to look at. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a guy I used to work with, a very good painter, a guy called Trent Nyman, who, uh, who always, always tried to have something nice to say about everybody's paintwork, or everybody's yeah. paint jobs and that sort of thing. Uh, but you knew that you hadn't done a very good job when mm -hmm. his comment was, you've chosen a wonderful miniature there. But he was really good. He's quite a slow, but very effort. good. Yeah. Oh no, he wouldn't even say that. It's just like your minute. The miniature choice is spectacular. Everything else, not so much. <laughs> but there we go. Okay. I just realised I forgot to do the arms on Varklav. There we go. What have we got? Uh, what's going on in the chat there? With chat people, uh... says, um, not too much. Mad says hello, and Justin Shin says, too spooky for me. Too spooky? Too spooky. Ah. We're, we're, you got to bring it back in, Dude. Job, that was spooky. Okay. You're scary. I'm scaring people? You're scaring people. Oh. oh, the models are scary. Don't worry, they're only plastic. It's almost a line from Craig says, Aliens. Yeah, saw an Age of Sigmar figure at my FLGS that I wanted right up till I saw the $140 price tag. And Ooh. Eric says, do you know whether those models will be released separately, um, for example, without all of the Night Vault game components? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, these, for these particular ones, uh, I expect that they will, but not for a while, not for uh, a year, actually. The reason I say that is uh, the two warbands that were in Warhammer Underworld's Shadespire, were, uh, Garrick's Reavers and uh, Steelheart's Champions, those two are going to be, now that they're not available in that core set anymore, um, they are going to be released separately. Uh, so. That'll be something to look out for, but yeah, it'll be a while. It, basically, when GW releases the next Warhammer Underworlds Rad box Forest game. Stormlight says, hmm, you've chosen a wonderful miniature. I have. Oh, wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Thanks. As long as miniature choice can go down as a, as a bonus, as a plus. That's fine. You know, it's, that's an artistic decision that you are <laughs> making because you have to work on composition. Yep. You know, you're putting that into your skill level accounts and art school gave me a BS for multiple reasons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rad Allergan says, I have an Age of Sigmar starter set with all the night haunts and I'm very interested in your color schemes. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, the, uh, basically the color scheme that we're using here is really to, to highlight both the, the miniatures and the, uh, these paints here, the technical paints. There are two sets of them. I'm going to put them under the close cam here. There is uh, Hexwraith Flame, which I will not be able to get. There we go. Hexwraith Flame is this one, the green one. Uh, so over all of our green areas on the, on the miniatures. We've put a layer of that over there. Uh, and most of these actually we've come back with uh, highlights. So we've mixed in some white to that hex wraith flame. Uh, and then for the darker cowling, or the cowls that they're wearing, uh, we've used uh, night haunt gloom, which is this um, sort of blue gray kind of color. Uh, and we've done at least two coats on each of those, um, the cowls, to, to help darken them up. But uh, both of these are available from, uh, from Games Workshop or your local store that sells Citadel, the Citadel paints. Um, they're very cool. They're a little bit different to uh, washes. They're a little bit thicker, um, and they flow, um, the, really the flow's like a little bit smoother. Yeah. yeah, they are yeah, really, really nice. I really like how, how they go. So that's the that's the sort of the key 
those are the key elements for the, the color scheme that we're doing on these models. And everything else is just picking out the details. So. Let's steal some aluminum. Aluminum. For some swords and axes. Nice. Oh, I've got this one here as well. That's a, a gun metal if you want to go with Ooh. something a little bit darker. Because that Vallejo aluminum is really bright. <laughs> really bright. Maybe everything else is rusted, but these are just... Are they polished? Yeah. Somebody's taking care of those weapons? <laughs> you always have to take care of your weapons, even in the underworld. I think if... Are the weapons <laughs> ethereal as well? That's the question. Is That's it like, a good is it, question. That's about 90% of my fear right there. <laughs> okay. are, the, are the weapons real? I don't know. <laughs> That's the. That's when you look at your crew and you're like, "Are you gonna find out? <laughs> are, are you gonna go? Who's gonna step are up to you? that one?" <laughs> yep. uh, Eric Sarlin says, "Do the two washes behave differently from one another? The blue seems less transparent. Uh, the blue is a little bit thicker, um, or has more. It has more pigment in it, I think, than the uh, than the hex wraith flame. So night haunt gloom. The the blue." Mm. Seems to have a bit more pigment, and, but uh, yeah, so a, a little bit different. Not too, not significantly different though. You put multiple layers. Uh, yeah, color, right? over the uh, over the blue we have. Right. Yeah, I guess yes. Sorry, I, I didn't realize that's a, another reason it might be looking quite a bit darker. But I think there is a slight difference between the two. There we go. I think uh, most of that silver is done. Because I want to have the uh, the sword look a bit rusted. Uh, we'll see if we can get that. Yeah. So at the moment, the sword itself doesn't have any texture on it. Um, so I painted the uh, what did I paint? Tinny tin first. And I'm painting over it with the uh, this army painter uh, gun metal, okay. and just not painting it completely flat, just leaving sort of sections of that uh, tinny tin showing through, so it starts to give it a bit of a pitted kind of look. My guys have definitely not been maintaining their ethereal weapons, <laughs> but uh, I managed to get some paint on my sculpt. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and now I'll come back with I get some uh, Vallejo red leather. I think um, somebody on Tuesday. Yep, sure thing. There got, we go. some, got some roses to paint. Painting the roses purple. Painting the roses. Uh, somebody on Tuesday was asking about uh, doing rust effects or at least uh, working on an article for Game Trade magazine. They're doing some rust effects. Um, for small, uh, small things like swords or this, the little bit of chain mail we have in the armor here. No worries, we'll get there. <laughs> um, so yeah, in sort of around this area. There we go. Uh, what I'm gonna do to simulate some rust is I've got some red leather from uh, the Vallejo model color range, which is a nice sort of orangey brown, very rust-like color. And I'll just paint a little bit of that into there. And dab that around. And we'll come back and check that out once that's dry. You can do a similar sort of thing on the blade. Rather than painting it as a wash over the whole thing, you just do some patchy kind of work there. Starts to give you some pretty cool. Uh, there we go. Always messing with the owner. <laughs> so, turning it the correct way. Yeah, there we go. So, once that dries, we'll see a, a sort of much more of a uh, pitted, rusty kind of look. Let's come back and hit those edges up there. Or well, not the edges, but the uh, just under the cowling. And on the chains. Okay. 
Get now so I can finish this guy up. The flame on the candle. Ooh. Should I go with an unnatural flame? It's like greenish. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking, like, so it's called hex wraith flame. <laughs> Maybe do some some flame some with spooky. it. Spooky. Okay. I'm mixing a little bit of yellow. Make it spooky. Spooky. So, it's only a little piece of flame, so it should be fine. I'm going to leave the candle black. <laughs> so everybody knows they're the spookiest candles, right? How can you tell? Because a Yankee candle don't make any black ones. <laughs> Am I wrong? And now I, know. I might be wrong. I might be and now wrong. I, know. I haven't checked. That was just. I don't, I don't know if they make anything spooky. What would a Yankee candle that would be spooky? What would it smell like? Oh, I don't know. What's fear. a spooky smell? What? What's a fear, fear smell like? What? Sweat. Stale sweat. Uh, <laughs> that's what I fear. Oh gosh. <laughs> Locker rooms. Yep. There you go. <laughs> I don't know what does fear smell like. Chat, what does fear smell like? What would a, <laughs> what would a spooky Yankee candle smell like? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is not maple syrup. Nope. I think they actually have like maple-y, maple sure smelling do, yeah. ones. I feel like that's definitely something Yankee candle would have. Yeah, if they don't already have it, they should definitely have like a, a maple bacon. Ooh, I would wake up hungry oh, yeah. every day of totally. my life. <laughs> I think that'd be the way to go. All right. Okay. So there we go. I'm gonna pop them out on the uh, the spinner. Yeah. So that sword will come around, and you'll get to see the see how that looks. Very nice. Very nice. Mm. Oh, just noticed a flower that I missed. Yeah, those flowers are sneaky. They are. They're everywhere. Sneaky flowers. How are yours looking? I'm Come actually on. looking kind of nice. I want to go over the chains and kind of dull them up a little bit. Yep. Um, I'm gonna add that red leather would be a is a, is a good one. Yeah. Would oh, you already grab some? Oh. Yeah. Oh, good. Right, dull them up a little bit. Go over the a little bit of detailing on my noose. And Very see cool. how that works. Nice. Okay. Gotten a lot so neater since last time. <laughs> I'm slowly, I'm learning. Learning. I'm doing well. I'm becoming more powerful, Dave. Yes. <laughs> it's one of those things. I, I think we've talked about it a number of times before on the show, but uh, for, for me, the sort of the number one thing to learn is just that, that neatness is the first thing. And it takes a little while to get that that brush control and the... It definitely does. Sort of the, knowing, knowing you were, uh, being, being confident that when you put your uh, brush to the miniature, the paint's gonna go where you want it to. So it takes time, and particularly some of these little details, that can be tough. But that's where other things, other techniques like uh, washes <laughs> Walter, and too things. quiet. Well, give us some to say, Walter. Man. We are too quiet. We are too we quiet. Are. <laughs> we were talking before about what was everyone's favorite spooky story. Do we have any spooky stories? I have my favorite spooky story. It's not <laughs> I don't know how spooky it is. <laughs> so when I was in like elementary, middle school, yeah. we all went on a sleepaway camp. And okay. of course, what do a bunch of young girls do whenever everyone's on a sleepaway camp? I don't know. We tell spooky stories. Oh, okay. And we right eat now. too much candy. Okay. So we were all trying to out spooky one another. And um, we were all like snuggled up. And one of my friends starts telling the story. And I can't remember how she got to this part or anything else about it other than she starts talking about how there was a fan. And the fan went around and around and around. 
and around. <laughs> and she kept trying to make it dramatic, so she just kept saying how the fan went around right. and around. And one of the quietest girls in our group, Elizabeth, goes, no, the fan did the Russian ballet. <laughs> and at that moment, someone had snuck over to the light switch yeah. and flipped on the fan and the lights, and we all screamed, and it was very dramatic, <laughs> because we were all like 10, so that was spooky. Right. And the but, <laughs> was the fan going around and around? Yes, because the fan was really going around and around and around. Um, and the story never actually got finished or told right. or anything. But to this day, that's, that's my favorite spooky tale. <laughs> right. Five minutes. Nice. Well, Four, five. Minutes. Four minutes now. What's yours? Uh, I don't have one, really. You don't have a spooky story? I don't story? have a spooky story. You need no. a spooky story. I'll have to come up with one. I'll come up with one for next week. I'm going to expect it next week, next Thursday. I'm going to be here. I'm, I'm going to be all ready. I'm going to say, all right, it is time, it time, is time for, the for spooky a spooky story. story. Okay. Ready. Come up with I'll one. try and be prepped. Scare me. Okay. All right, I'm not going to let them forget, guys. It's not Don't allowed, let them forget either. It's not allowed to involve a fan? No? Okay. It doesn't have to involve a fan. Right here. <laughs> I had to think for a moment. I was like, like a fan or like a fan? Yeah. Okay. So as you heard Leona scream out, we've got four minutes to go. It's probably three minutes now, but... Uh, yep. Yeah. It looks like I'm not going to finish... We're gonna finish. <laughs> Michael says the spookiest story ever is that thing that got into my apartment last night and took my soul. <laughs> <gasps> yeah, that could be it. <laughs> Whatever oh, that was, <laughs> you should have that checked out. That's yes. So <laughs> that sounds that sounds like something that's, serious. That's worth having checked out. Yeah, it's, I don't know what doctor you go to for that. That might be more of like a shaman witchy mm -hmm. thing. It might be. Um, it's cool. Okay, yeah, that's not there. put those guys up here. <laughs> okay. Ah, I'm, ah, if ah. I don't knock them, I'm just, ah. There we go. All right. We're gonna zoom back so they're all in, uh, all in shot Yeet. now. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna. It's a ghost party. It is. Ooh. There we go. So, we should put them all in. There we go. <laughs> Watch them Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yep. I love Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo's great. So there we go. So that's our um, Thorns of the Briar Queen uh, warband for Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. Mm. Um, just got the basing to finish and a few uh, a few little details to pick out here and there. But that's a pretty good um, pretty good run for the week. Yeah, we've done uh, we've done well. Uh, yeah. So there we go. Ooh, <laughs> ah, here's the box. <laughs> Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. It is in stores now. It is sixty dollars. Uh, if your store doesn't have it, price. they can uh, get in touch with Alliance and pick up a copy of that. Uh, yeah, it's a great price for uh, a very cool game. Um, very excited that now that everybody's helped me paint my, uh, my wall, <laughs> and I can now go to the store and play, yeah. uh, which would be super awesome. And they're imbued with the power of friendship. They are indeed. So you'll win. And they're, they're just, which makes them just spooky instead of scary. Yes. I think we've decided that. True. Great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us this week. Uh, make sure to head along to, um, to, if you're watching us on Game Trade Media on Facebook now, make sure you like our page. Uh, head along to Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. Uh, join there. Ask to join. One of us will let you in. <laughs> um, I think we're actually we're up over 750, aren't we? Yeah. No. Okay, Ooh. so next week we'll have another competition um, to win something cool. I'm not sure what we're going to give away. Something Spooky. Some spooky. Something spooky. Where you do the hands? Uh, where I do the hands. Right. Spooky. Okay. So that's that's typing. It's spooky. Uh, it's a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> it's a thriller. Um, it's just about me doing silly things, isn't it? Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> but uh, excellent. Uh, so do all of those things. Head along to your local store. Become part of the community there. Sit down. Do some painting. Talk to people about what they're painting. Uh, play some games. Get involved. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, I'm Dave. I'm Gretchen. And we'll see you at the game store. Guys, we're super excited to share that our new book, The Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games, is now available. 
We love tabletop gaming as much as you do, and we're so thrilled to share the finished book with the community. This book covers the history of the tabletop industry, from classic board games like Monopoly to collectible card games like Magic, and of course, RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons. The book also highlights some of the top talent in the industry, featuring interviews with Peter Atkinson, Matthew Mercer, Larry Elmore, and many more. Plus, we chatted with collectors from all walks of life who shared their own knowledge and insight about tabletop collecting. We also discuss everything from the impact of crowdfunding on the current state of the industry, as well as take a look at all sorts of ways to preserve your collection for years to come. This book provides a perfect snapshot of the tabletop industry at large and shows what makes this hobby so great. You can head into your local game store or comic shop right now and pick up your copy of the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games. If they don't have it in stock, you can order your copy through previews, through Game Trade Magazine, or through gemstonepub.com. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.